this week on Choice Hacking. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. Thank you. In 1954, Walt Disney did something a little crazy. A successful filmmaker, he turned his back on the movies and decided to build a theme park. He bought 160 acres in rural Anaheim, California, and he started building what would become Disneyland. Walt Disney had some pretty ambitious ideas, so he assembled a team of what he called Imagineers to do it. They were engineers, yes, but they were also artists, magicians, animators, scientists, and even puppeteers. Over the past 70 years, the Imagineers have followed something called Mickey's Ten Commandments. And they're basically a cheat sheet for creating a brand that people obsess over. I'm Jennifer Kleinhens, and you're listening to Choice Hacking, a podcast about applying behavioral science and psychology to business marketing, experience design, and more. Join me today for the first part of a two-part series that will unpack the psychology behind Mickey's Ten Commandments, why they're important, why they work, and how you can apply their lessons to your own business. But first, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this podcast, Choice Hacking, the agency. Did you know that Choice Hacking isn't just a podcast? We're also a customer experience consulting firm that can help you fascinate and engage users, drive revenue and create emotional bonds with your brand that people won't want to break. Choice Hacking clients range from startups just getting kicked off all the way up to Fortune 100 brands that want to get an edge over their competition with applied psychology and behavioral science. Over their careers, our team has worked with brands like McDonald's, AT&T, Adidas, and Starbucks in markets across the world. And now we're bringing decades of experience to our work at Choice Hacking. Sound interesting? Let's chat. Just visit choicehacking.com forward slash together to learn more. Now, on to the show. The first of Mickey's Ten Commandments is one with which I'm sure we can all agree. Know your audience. Disney's idea for a theme park was born after a visit to an amusement park with his daughters, He was frustrated because while his daughters rode rides, he had to sit alone on a bench. At the time, rides were only for young kids and there was nothing for the adults to do but wait. Walt Disney got lucky because he knew his audience. It was him sitting alone on that park bench eating popcorn instead of having fun together with his kids. But once Disney started building Disneyland, he stopped being the customer. He knew that as the park grew, it would become harder and harder to know who Disneyland's guests really were. Why is it so important to know your audience? Well, one reason is a psychological principle called the hot-cold empathy gap. This principle says we have a hard time predicting how we'll behave in the future when faced with stress and obstacles. Because when we're not currently feeling emotional, in other words, we're cold, it's hard to predict how we will react when we're in a highly emotional state otherwise known as hot. For example, if I asked you how you'd respond if you saw someone get hit by a car, you'd probably say something like, I'd rush to their aid and call 911. And that's an easy assumption to make, given that you didn't just see a traumatic event. You're not currently experiencing the rush of emotion that would happen after witnessing an upsetting accident. But what does a car accident have to do with Disneyland? Well, if you're asking Imagineers to create experiences for guests who are in a highly emotional or hot state, while they are in a cold state, it can result in a park experience that doesn't quite hit the mark. Imagineers can't be expected to design experiences for families who are stressed because of the summer heat, upset because the queue for their ride is moving too slowly, or even just emotionally overwhelmed by the sights and the sounds of the park 
without experiencing these emotional circumstances themselves. By living through these hot emotional moments that guests experience, Imagineers can create an empathetic and overall better customer experience. The second of Mickey's Ten Commandments is wear your guests' shoes. As we just talked about in our first commandment, one of the biggest challenges in design is empathy. But if you've experienced the same challenges as your customer, it's easy to spot what's broken. That's why Walt Disney insisted that his Imagineers visit Disneyland at least every other week and stand in line. That way they could experience it just like guests. For you, wearing your guest shoes could mean using your own product or shopping in your own store, experiencing life as a customer, not a creator. We just talked about the hot-cold empathy gap, but there's another cognitive bias that Disney was aware of, consciously or not. It's called the false consensus effect. This describes people's tendency to think that our own beliefs, behaviors, and thoughts are more common in the general population than they actually are. For example, if we eat at a McDonald's once a week, we might assume that other folks eat there just as often. If we read the New York Times, we might assume that more people read the New York Times than who actually do. If we fly first class, we might also think it's something that most other people have done at some point in their lives. By regularly visiting the park, Imagineers can not only have empathy for their guests, but also observe if the Imagineers' experiences in the park are more or less common than they think. So for example, if an Imagineer hates fruit-flavored ice cream, they're likely to think most other people hate it too. But if they observe long snaking lines to buy the famous Disney Dole Whip ice cream, then they have no choice but to rethink their opinion and consider how to make the product more prominent in the park. Now let's talk about a commandment that you might find a little surprising coming from one of the most creative businesses on earth. Mickey's third commandment is organize the flow of people and ideas. Walt Disney knew the park experience couldn't just be fun. It also had to be easy to understand. Think about it. How many times do people even visit Disneyland? Do you really think they want to spend the whole time getting lost? Disney knew that organization might feel boring, but that an organized park could actually be more magical because guests could have more fun. In his book, One Little Spark, Imagineer Marty Sklar gave an example of organizing the flow of people and ideas. The Disneyland ride, Indiana Jones, and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. The line for this ride starts outside, next to the Jungle Cruise, where guests are surrounded by lush plants and ambient jungle sounds. Marty Sklar described the rest of the queue this way. The 50,000-square-foot show building housing the Temple of Doom is your destination. Inside the spike room, watch out for those spheres, the rotunda calendar, are those large stones moving? And the show introduction, presented as an old newsreel about the discovery of the tomb, set the stage for the adventure to come. Why is it so important to create an organized flow and narrative for guests? Well, it's down to a principle called narrative bias. Narrative bias describes our tendency to make sense of the world through stories. Studies show that people are more likely to trust, remember, and become emotionally invested in stories. Disney and his Imagineers created an immersive world where every moment is a smaller part of a bigger narrative. Stories make visitors feel like they're part of the magic. Now I have to say, this next commandment wins the award for the least expected. Mickey's commandment number four, create a weenie. Now, before you wonder why Disney is talking about weenies in his amusement park, a weenie is another name for a visual magnet that will guide people through an experience. Think of weenies as landmarks. They help you understand the flow of an experience, where you've been and where you might go next relative to their location. The most famous Disney park weenies our Spaceship Earth in Epcot, so the big golf ball-looking building, 
and Sleeping Beauty's castle in Disneyland, the big castle that's in the center of the park. They're both easy to spot no matter where you are in the park, and they help you understand the flow of the experience. Without these visual magnets to guide you, a day at the amusement park can quickly descend into chaos. But what is the psychology behind why weenies are so important? Well, it's down to a principle called visual salience. Salience describes how prominent or emotionally striking something is. If an element seems to jump out from its environment or capture people's emotions, it's salient. And if it blends into the background it takes a while to find, it's not. By making visual magnets super salient and easy to find no matter where you are in the park, Imagineers can create experiences that are easy to navigate. And when the parks feel easy to navigate, they're less stressful and more fun. Mickey's commandment number five, communicate with visual literacy. Disney knew that people respond better to nonverbal communication, which meant creating a consistent visual code in the park was important. Imagineer John Hench described visual literacy this way. We pay close attention to color relationships and how they help us tell our stories. Nothing in a theme park is seen in isolation, so we visualize the buildings in the context of the surrounding pavement, the landscape, the sky with its changing weather. Color assists guests in making decisions because it establishes the identity of each attraction in the park. Disney knows that to be effective communicators who also create an immersive park experience, they have to use all of the nonverbal tools at their disposal, color, shape, form, and texture. But why is it so important to communicate with visual literacy instead of just relying on words and copy to convey meaning? Well, it's down to a psychological principle called the picture superiority effect. This principle says that people remember and understand images better than words. By making Disney parks visually driven, Imagineers keep visitors engaged and immersed. Visual literacy also creates an experience that's accessible to people of almost all ages, languages, and abilities. Mickey's Ten Commandments are a cheat sheet for creating a customer experience that's immersive, fun, empowering, persuasive, and accessible. And whether you're designing a digital experience, a retail shop, or even a theme park of your own, there's something to be learned from each principle and the psychology behind it. Stay tuned because next week I'll be sharing the second part of this two-part series. See you there. Thanks for listening to the Choice Hacking Podcast. Don't forget, you can learn more about behavioral science and psychology applied to business when you subscribe to the free Choice Hacking newsletter. You'll join more than 7,000 brilliant UX, CX, and marketing folks from companies like Ikea, Uber, and Coca-Cola who get my newsletter. To sign up, just visit choicehacking.com forward slash subscribe. That's choicehacking.com forward slash subscribe. Until next time. (laughs) 